Hey YouTube, this is City Prepping. In this video, we're going to take a look at solar blankets. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video talking about different solar panel options, and I did mention these at the beginning of that video. And in this video, I'll do a bit more of a deep dive going into details, uh, explaining these, some of the pros and cons, how they stack up against competition. And if you follow my channel, you know that I don't do a lot of dedicated product reviews, and that's for a reason. If there's a product that I find that really stands out in the market, I will do a review on it. And I think this really qualifies as one of those videos. FYI, I didn't get paid for this. These are products that were actually sent to me by the owner. And so what we'll do in this video is we'll go through, kind of explain the different things you need to know about this to see if this is an option you might consider when you're looking for a way to power your solar generator or charge a battery during a disaster. So let's jump in. When reviewing products for my channel, here are the criteria I use, which I'll cover in this video. Use cases, for emergency preparedness, what problem does it solve? Specs, we'll cover the features of these products. Mobility, how portable is this product? Durability, how does it hold up under repeated use? Efficiency, how do they compare to standard solar panels? OPSEC, how does it keep me safe from being targeted after a disaster? Competition, how does it stack up to other options on the market? Cost. Is the price justified or are there better options at lower price points? If at any time during this video you want to check out these products I'll cover, I'll post links in the description and comments section below along with a coupon code CITYPREPPING which you can use at the checkout to save 10% off your order. Also, if you want to get more information on any of these products we'll cover, you might want to check out the Off Grid Trek YouTube channel which I'll link to in the description comments section in the cards above. There's a lot of excellent information there. Use cases. After a disaster and the power is down, many of the modern conveniences we rely upon on a daily basis will require electricity and will be non-operational. Charging our cell phones, laptops, flashlights, two-way radios, refrigerators, or for some, operating a CPAP machine or keeping insulin cold, and a myriad of other electrical devices suddenly come into focus if they stop working. Connected to a battery system or a solar generator, these solar blankets provide us with the means to harness the sun and ensure critical devices are operational. With the challenges we're facing here in the United States, with an aging power infrastructure and increasing incidents of the power grid filling, like recently seen in Texas and California, having a backup means to produce your own power is no longer a luxury, but increasingly becoming a necessity. Specs. So what are these and what makes them unique? We're all familiar with solar panels, but what is a solar blanket? A solar blanket is essentially a solar panel that is designed differently than the traditional rigid solar panel most of us are used to. Typically, when you think of solar panels, you think of the large flat panels that are mounted on the roof of structures, or you may have some smaller foldable panels that you use on campouts. These traditional options are a bit bulkier and not well suited for portability and can be a bit cumbersome to deploy. Solar blankets, on the other hand, are foldable, compact, typically more durable, way less, more efficient, and perform better under low light conditions, with the one downside being that they are a bit more expensive. These also have Anderson cable connectors and are configured so you can't reverse polarity. The backing material is a rubberized canvas with the sun power cells sewn into the canvas. That is how they make the systems foldable. We'll cover each one of these points in more detail momentarily. For this video, I'll focus on these products off grid Trek sent me four solar blankets, along with an MPPT solar charger and an EMP bag. For the solar blankets, you've got options ranging from 215 watts, 200 watts, and 120 watts. The manufacturer has also designed these so that you can connect two solar blankets together to double their amps and wattage. If you don't have a battery system and you just simply want to power smaller devices like a cell phone, you might want to look at their 28.5 watt solar blanket which, like their other solar blankets, has two USB ports for high-speed charging. Additionally, they sell an MPPT solar charge controller if you want to charge a car battery directly from the solar blanket. I carry this in my Jeep in the event I instantly leave something on inside which drains the battery and I need a way to charge it. Here's a brief overview to give you a general idea about what makes them unique. We'll go into greater detail momentarily on each of these points. They are designed to charge 12 volt, 24 volt batteries and multiple USB devices and can be powered even in low light conditions such as in smoke and in clouds. They have a voltage regulator on the back including two USB ports, one DC 18 volt output with 20 centimeter cable and an Anderson connector. Their weight is a fraction of traditional rigid solar panels and are easy to transport. 
So let's run through the typical criteria I know are important for this community. Mobility. If a disaster forces you or your family to flee your home and you want to power your solar generator, would you rather grab solar panels and the required cables to connect them all or one of these solar blankets? Of course, the question becomes which option produces more electricity? We'll cover that in a second. With the solar blanket, you can easily stow this nearly anywhere in your car. Plus, being lightweight, they're easy to pick up and move. Additionally, they're far less bulky than traditional solar panels. Even solar panels, which fold up like a suitcase, which take up less space than a rigid panel, still require a considerable amount of room when transporting for nearly the same power output. You could easily add one of these to your bug out bag, as I have on mine, so I've got a power source if I have to quickly leave my home. With traditional rigid solar panels, that's just not an option. Plus, these include four reinforced grommets and four aluminum carabiners to secure the blanket if you want to hang them up to get a better angle toward the sun. When it comes to mobility, this is by far their best feature. Easy to carry, store, load, and very lightweight and compact. Efficiency. This is another one of the unique features of these solar blankets when comparing them to traditional solar panels. Fortunately, living in Southern California, we get nothing but sun, but that's not the case everywhere. The off-grid Trek blankets solar cells are able to harness a sizable amount of power even on cloudy or overcast days. The solar panel efficiency is up to 23.8%, while the average solar panel efficiency is typically between 10 to 12%. This is achieved by them using SunPower Gen 3 Maxion solar cells. Let's take a look at 200 watts of solar panels and a 200 watt solar blanket charging the same two solar generators. As you can see, traditional solar panels produce less wattage being that they are less efficient. Durability. When it comes to products I want in my prepper inventory, I want to make sure that whatever I can buy can withstand abuse and still perform. The solar cells are wired in series, so if one of the sections of the cell is covered or damaged, the unit itself will still collect energy, although at a reduced capability. The surface of these individual cells is ETFE or ethylene tetrafluoroethylene, which has a similar transmission to glass, but at just 1% the weight. This helps to enhance the solar blanket's performance in life. Imported from Japan, the EFT surface has better transparency than the normal PET surface used on solar panels, which increases the solar blanket's power output in the same light conditions. According to the manufacturer, the ETFE surface also increases the life of the solar blanket to more than eight years. Even if one of the individual cells in these blankets is covered or damaged, the solar blanket output is still significant. OPSEC. One of the things that becomes incredibly important after a disaster is OPSEC, which stands for Operational Security. If there is a prolonged emergency in which help is not coming, running a gas generator creates noise and fumes which will draw people's attention to your home. You quickly become known as the person with the supplies and means to thrive in this disaster. It won't take long before people will be knocking at your door asking, or depending on the severity of the situation, demanding you provide them with supplies. If at all possible, we want to avoid that situation. This is the beauty of having a solar generator. I've reviewed a lot on this channel over the years, and they each have their own unique features. In the context of OPSEC, the biggest selling point is that they don't produce noise nor fumes. You don't alert others that you have the means to produce power, which begs the question, what else do you have for emergencies? With solar blankets, you're able to easily deploy these in your backyard or even put them in your vehicle if you're mobile and charge your battery or solar generator. The ease with which you can quickly set them up and take them down gives you a lot of advantages. Competition. The closest competition to these is PowerFilm. PowerFilm is another great option if you're looking for lightweight, compact solar options. The solar blanket and PowerFilm will work better in low light situations compared to monocrystalline or polycrystalline solar panels. The solar blanket is about one fourth of the size of the PowerFilm blanket. It's completely waterproof versus water resistant, and it produces more electricity than the large power film and at a lower price point. These are your best options for overcast days as they will still work when a rigid panel will not perform at the same level. But the power film and the off-grid Trek solar blanket are solid choices. They're both lightweight, easily portable, and easily deployable in most terrain and situations. These are built with rugged military usage in mind. They'll both sustain damage and keep working, though they'll drop in their efficiency. Cost. When compared to traditional entry-level solar panels, the cost is significantly higher for solar blankets. But based on the points covered, there are clearly advantages to these for emergency purposes, camping, or overlanding. 
I'm in the process of building out a Jeep for overlanding purposes, and one of the problems I've encountered for charging my solar generator is the fact that solar panels are bulky and heavy and simply take up too much space. While the foldable solar panel suitcases offer some advantages over standard rigid solar panels, I appreciate the compact, lightweight, and easy to deploy advantage solar blankets offer. Clearly, I have a massive advantage in having these sent to me to review on my channel. Of course, I realize many are on a tight budget in a time where inflation is hitting Americans hard in their pockets, and that's not lost on me. But for those with disposable income that are looking for a superior product when it comes to solar panels, you may want to consider this option. Hopefully this video gave you enough information to help you decide whether this is a good fit for you or not. Uh, again, I've got different solar panels that I've collected over the years, different manufacturers have sent me. This is hands down my favorite option because of the size, the portability, the ease of deployment. There's a lot of unique features that these have over your standard traditional solar panels. Solar panels are not something you're gonna really easily be able to throw into a vehicle if you have to leave during an emergency. And honestly, I don't wanna be somewhere, uh, you know, if I'm having to leave my home and set up a bunch of panels, connect all the cables, yada, yada, yada. These are just easy to roll up, you know, roll, rather roll out, set up, and connect right into a solar generator, and you've got power. Now, obviously, the downside is the cost. And I, you know, again, that's not lost on me that these are they're not cheap now again obviously everybody's got a different budget and i don't want to diminish that fact but again if you have uh you know the option and you've got the availability and you've got different you know disposable income to me i think these are a good solution if you're looking for solid uh you know solid solar panel options if you have any feedback any thoughts any questions please post that in the comments section below and as always stay safe out there